Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Uh, today we're going to be going over the uh, samples for the ASP.NET portion of our tool set. Um, these samples are comprised of the uh, web showcase, uh, which is more of an end-to-end -end experience, uh, showing what your application could look like if you were to use our controls. Um, and also there's the feature browser, which will show you some of the more specific features for each of these controls. Um, this demo is going to be comprised of going over the showcase. Um, if you wanted to uh, follow along, you could go to samples.infragistics.com and you could view the same samples there, or you could install the SDK onto your machine um, and you'd have access to that as well. Okay, so we're gonna start with the uh, portfolio manager of our showcase. Let me launch that. And when that loads, you'll see our tab items across the top where it says clients, calendar, mail, reports, and you'll see our grid on the uh, bottom. Um, if I go over to the expansion indicator over here and click on that, uh, you'll see that I get chop records. Uh, that's just showing that we support hierarchy that you could bind our grid to a um, hierarchical data source. Uh, on top of that, let me collapse that. Uh, you'll also notice that there's only three columns visible um, on the parent level. Uh, that's just showing you um, that you can make use of something called hidden columns because this grid is actually bound to more data than it's currently being shown. And this is so that you can abstract away some of the data um, that the end user doesn't necessarily need to see um, readily. Um, if you want to see more information, you could do make, some, make use of something like a row edit template, uh, which I can show you by double clicking. And you'll see that there's more data uh, being visible now. Um, on top of that, you'll see that you can place uh, different types of controls in here, such as a multi-line text box here, or over here, if you come to state, you'll see that there's a uh, drop down that you can make use of. And pretty much you can just um, place your own user controls in here. Uh, you could also uh, pl place your own custom controls. It's really up to you. And on top of that, you could use this just to view data or typically it would be used for editing as well. So both options are available to you. Okay, let me close that. Uh, if I come over to here to download report. Uh, when I click on that link button, uh, essentially what's happening is that we're going back to the server and generating a uh, report object and exporting that report object to a PDF file. Um, it's taking the grids data that it's currently bound to um, and exporting to a PDF file. Um, right here in front of you is essentially the document that was just generated um, using our exporter. Um, you could also take the grids data and export it to XPS format as well. Both formats are supported. And also when you uh, take a look at this PDF, you'll notice that there's a chart on the, along the right side of the document. Um, that's just showing you that you can take our chart control and export it to these uh, PDF or XPS files. Uh, we have about 50 to 60 different chart types and all of those can be exported uh, to these report objects. In addition, if you see on the left side, uh, you'll see the different uh, records uh, for this grid. Uh, you'll notice that it's not laid out in the typical fashion um, horizontally um, in different cells. Instead, it's laid vertically. Uh, that's just showing you that you can handle some of the uh, events off our exporter. And right now we're doing it on a row basis and taking that row's data and orienting in a vertical fashion. Let me just close that. Okay, we're going to move on to the next tab, which is the calendar. When I click on that, you'll see a little loading indicator come up um, as it's loading that tab's contents. Um, that's using making use of the uh, AJAX that's built into our web tab control. Um, it's the functionality that we're using there is called uh, load on demand. And what that does is that it only loads that current tab's contents and not the contents of all the other tabs. Uh, what that does is it speeds up rendering time because you're not pushing all the other data that's not relevant uh, for this view. So you're not pushing the client tab information, the mail tab or the reports. Instead, you're only loading the data for this calendar tab. Uh, on this specific tab, you'll see a day view on the left side and a month view on the right side. Uh, these are just two of the four different views that we have for our web schedule components. Uh, if you come over here to the day view and actually drag this appointment, uh, you'll see that we support drag and drop, and you'll see that this uh, appointment on the month view actually updated as well. Uh, this is all possible because all of these different views are tied to an info object, and that kind of acts as a middle layer uh, that manages all these appointment objects. Uh, this would then ultimately tie to your uh, database, uh, whether it be um, some SQL database or some uh, web services. Um, essentially out of the box, we provide a SQL data provider and an access data provider. If you want to bind to some other source or to your um, other custom schema that you already had defined, 
uh, you would make use of a custom data provider um, to do that. Uh, in addition to that, if you actually come over to this appointment on the month view and click on it, let me say just open the occurrence, it's going to pop open a uh, appointment form. And this is the appointment form that you would use to either edit these appointments or create new appointments. And you'll see that you have access to the start time, end time, different times. You can make it an all day event. Uh, you could set all the description for it. Uh, let me just close that. And also you'll notice that if you come over here, you'll see these little icons that's just showing you that uh, this is a recurring appointment. So we do support recurrences and variances as well. Okay, let me move on to the mail tab. Okay, once that tab loads, what you'll see is our HTML editor. Um, before I get confused, there is no mail functionality uh, provided with this. It's just showing you um, how you can edit rich text uh, through a browser. Um, typically what you would get in um, internet applications that let you send HTML formatted emails. Uh, so you can make use of that using our HTML editor. So let me come down here and let me type something like uh, hello world. And once I do that, um, I could select a specific range of text. I could bold it. Uh, I could set a color on it. Uh, I could set the font. So typically what you would get um, in a typical HTML editor. Uh, in addition to that, you can go to the HTML view. Uh, you can come back to design view, whatever uh, you're more comfortable with. Uh, you could insert images. So let me do that. See a lot of this functionality that you get um, in HTML documents you have available to you. You can insert Flash, uh, media. Um, you can clean Word documents when you paste Word uh, into here. Uh, in addition to that, let me show you something over here with this uh, spell checking button. When I click on this, it's going to open up a dialog that's actually going to spell check the contents of your HTML uh, file. So if I over here, you'll see that I misspelled world. That's not because I don't know how to spell. It's because I want to show you this feature. And when I click on change, it's going to change it to the suggested word and it's going to tell you that it's complete. And you'll see that if you go back to the HTML editor, uh, it updated correctly. Uh, the nice thing about the um, spell checker is that it's independent of the HTML editor, but it ties in nicely with it. Um, and it also supports multiple languages and user dictionaries. So if you had um, a lot of words that are not typically in dictionaries, such as um, maybe some medical terms or something in your company, maybe your company uh, uh, name always comes up misspelled. You can add those to your dictionary so they don't always uh, get flagged. Okay, let me move on to the last tab. And this reports tab will show you some of the different chart types that we have available. Uh, this is a 3D pie chart, which you already saw um, exported to that PDF earlier. And you'll see that you get little tool tips um, when you hover over the different slices. And that's essentially just done through um, JavaScript and image mapping. Um, you'll also see there's a legend on the right side. You can configure that to be on the right, left, top, bottom. Um, you could also configure all the text that you see here. If I go to the months at a glance, it'll show you an area chart and you get the same tool tips. And if I go to years at a glance, it'll show you a 3D cylinder chart. So this is three of the many different chart types we have. There are a lot more available to you and we'll go over that in more detail later. Okay, let me move on to the next showcase sample, uh, which would be our agent management. Okay, once this loads, uh, you'll see our tree along the left side, our web combo up top and our grid on the bottom. Um, if I click on, go to the tree and click on one of these ex expansion indicators, uh, you might see a little progress indicator that just came up in the middle. And what we made use of was the Ajax functionality built into our web tree. Um, we made use of something called load on demand. And what that did is it requested the chop records uh, for the node we just expanded. And this is nice as because you only request data as you need them and you're not downloading. Let's say Bryce had 5,000 child nodes under it. You don't necessarily want to have all that information pushed to the client if you didn't need to see it or the client didn't want to see it. So once they go over here and click on it, at that point you would um, push that data to the client. Uh, in addition to that, if you come over to the web combo and let's say I type the letter A, it's going to filter um, the records that that combo is bound to based on your input. So if I clear that, um, it'll show all the records again. If I go to AD, it'll show um, the records that are valid for that input. 
Uh, let me go over here and actually click on one of these for Lance Adams. And once I do that, you'll see the rest of the uh, page uh, updated. Uh, this is really possible um, because um, of our client-side object model. And what that really means is that we have JavaScript object um, objects for our server-side controls. Um, so typically, you would use um, document .get element by ID uh, to get an HTML object, and then you'd modify through some JavaScript. Uh, instead of that, you would use um, our utility functions, so like um, IGTBL get table by ID. Uh, that would retrieve our grid object. And once you get our grid object, you'd have access to a lot of the same methods and properties that you have access to on the server. And this will allow you to make changes without going back to the, um, to the server. And because you're using our object model, a lot of the changes you make uh, will get persisted when you post back. Okay. Um, while I'm on the sample, let me actually go over app styling real quick. Um, what app styling is, it makes, uh, takes the concept of style once used everywhere. Uh, typically what you would see with CSS, but it would apply it to our controls. So um, how you want your grid to look like, how you want your uh, combo to look like, how you want your uh, tree nodes to look like. Uh, all that can be defined uh, using our app styling. So if I come over here and actually select different style, uh, Royale, for example, you can see that you can rebrand your whole application. And this is um, done through the CSS modeling and all the uh, different hierarchies. So if you want to change your font across your whole application, there's a base class that you can modify uh, that could make all those changes without having to go to each of, the, each of those controls and setting it, uh, each of your pages and setting it. Also, the nice thing about this is that uh, you could define it um, on a page level on an application level or on a control level. So you have a lot of control on um, what style is used. Um, and this is just another example of a different style that I just loaded. And let me just show you the last style real quick. And yeah, this is a real powerful tool um, that you want that can speed up development because then you don't have to worry about um, styling your application. Maybe you have some company colors uh, that you're required to use, and then you could start make this um, style library once, and you could use it across a lot of your applications. Uh, if you needed to um, use different styles, you can just make those different styles and use those across your various applications. Uh, let me move on to the next sample. Uh, Infra dashboard. Okay, uh, once that loads, this is showing you what your dashboard could look like. If you were to use some of our controls, down here would be the charts, which you already saw. And something you haven't seen yet would be our gauge control. Uh, so over here would be our linear gauge, and on the bottom right would be our uh, radial gauge. If I come up to the web uh, panel, uh, what that allows you to do, it allows you to expand and collapse different regions of your web page. Um, if I come over to the chart, and let's say I click on the specific slice, you'll see that little progress indicator come up and the slice detached from the rest of the pie. Uh, what that's showing you is there's a lot of events that are available to you, um, whether client side or server side. And if you want to, let's say, drill down into that specific slice and show that slices um, more detailed information, you could do that. Uh, if you want to use some of the client side events and update some other part of the page, you could do that as well. Um, it's just showing you some of the capabilities that you have and it's really up to you and what you want to do. Uh, so over here would be our other chart that you already saw. Top of these two gauges that you see here, there's also another type of gauge called a digital gauge. And that'd be really similar to the alarm clock that you wake up to every day. Um, on the bottom here is actually um, another chart. What's unique about this chart is that it's a composite chart. And what that means is that you can take different 2D uh, chart layers and place them on top of each other. Uh, so right now what we have is a scatter chart with a spline chart. Uh, placed on top of each other. In addition to that, you can place them maybe next to each other. You can put uh, maybe more um, different layers on top. So if you want to put a column chart, you can do so. You can throw pie charts in different areas. You can use different axes. Um, it's all up to you. Um, the composite chart model is really a powerful tool um, that's open to um, creating a lot of custom charts. Okay. Uh, let me move on to our last showcase sample, which is uh, Infra Realty. Okay, and when this loads, um, essentially what this is showing is some of our newer, newer uh, Aikido controls. 
uh, let me briefly explain what our keto controls are. Um, essentially, we came up with the Aikido um, framework uh, so that we can work with the new uh, standards of uh, web development, such as XHTML, the new CSS, and AJAX. So it made sense for us, instead of taking our um, older controls and retrofit, retrofitting to the new standards uh, to actually create this Aikido framework that's actually built on top of ASP.NET AJAX. And then on top of this framework, we introduced a lot of the newer controls. Uh, what's nice about all the controls that are coming out for the Aikido framework is that not only does it support all the new standards and the AJAX, um, it also actually supports uh, three of the main browsers, which would be uh, Firefox, IE, and Safari. Okay, one of the first controls I want to go over for the showcase is our uh, slider control. So over here, this would be our slider control. Let me actually take one of these uh, cursors and move it over to about, let's say, about 2,400 square feet. And once I do that, you'll see that it uh, filtered the record set of all the different listings uh, based on what I uh, set it to. And this is just another uh, way for the end user to provide input uh, besides the standard um, text boxes, um, drop downs, and this will allow you that for them to do that without even using their keyboard, just using their mouse. In addition to that, if I ever actually go over to this more photos link, it's actually going to pop up our um, web dialog window control, which is also another keto control uh, that we introduced um, um, on top of the framework. Uh, the nice thing about this is that it can operate in modal and non-modal fashion. Um, you can also drag it around the form, and it is actually part of the form. So what that really means is that it uh, won't be blocked by pop-up blockers. Uh, you can minimize it, you can maximize it, kind of like what you would have in a uh, Windows Forms uh, form on the uh, rich client side on your uh, Windows machine. Uh, also on top of that, you could actually place uh, different controls inside of here. And this um, specific control that it has right now is actually our web image viewer control, which is also another Aikido control. Um, you'll see that if I actually click and drag, you can actually scroll through the images. Uh, kind of like the iPod touch interface. You could also use these buttons if you wanted to. So pretty much you could throw your own user controls in, in, in here. Um, you could throw your own custom controls. It's really up to you. Okay, that does it for our showcase samples. Um, thank you for joining us. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.